Common Council to order. Would you call the roll, please? Bauman? Here. Berg? Here. Bonet? Here. Serta? Here. Graf? Here. Manny? Here. Montemayor? Here. Perez? Here. Peterson? Here. Rindfleisch? Here. Sigali? Is she called? Oh, she called? Okay. Don't know. I didn't get the call, so, but it, okay. if she called, excuse. Uh, Stefan? Here. Van Akron? Here. Vanderweel? Excuse. Wangaman? Here. Warner? Here. 14 present. Quorum's present. Before we get into the agenda, just a little note. Uh, this morning, Alderman Vanderweel and his wife, Jody, had a baby girl, Jaden Marie. Seven pounds, seven ounces, 19 and a half inches long, and they're all doing well. So uh, if anyone wants to send a card or uh, from the council, or if you want to send something, please let me know. She's at St. Nicholas Hospital in room 248. So I think it'd be appropriate we send a card from the council. Any objections? All right. Uh, Alderman Warner, approval of minutes. I thank your honor. Move the minutes of the last common council meeting be approved at the same stand as entered on the record. Second. Move to second that minutes of the previous meeting stand approved under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Pledge of Allegiance, Alderman Warner. Mm -hmm. you please lead us? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We have one hearing this evening and has to amend the text of the zoning ordinance to create section 1528Y so as to prohibit outdoor wood burning fire wood burning furnaces as accessory uses in all districts. Any interested person wishing to be heard? Is there any interested person wishing to be heard? Alderman Warner. Thank you, Your Honor. Move the hearings be closed. Move the second the hearings be closed. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Public forum? <clears throat> Uh, first, we have Mr. Joseph Weber. <laughs> Mr. Weber, can I get your home address, please? Uh, Joseph Weber, 1028 Logan Avenue. Sheboygan, okay. 53083. Okay, thank you, and you have five minutes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council Members. This evening, I'd like to talk to you and give you a little history lesson and maybe a little slap on your wrist. I grew up here in Sheboygan in the 40s and the 50s. At that time, Sheboygan was a very closed city. What was said by politicians, by church members and teachers, you didn't question. It was a society built on out of sight, out of mind. I remember going to Redskin games and sitting on the uh, uh, stage at, down at the armory, going to the, going to the Sheboygan Indian games and sitting in a fenced-in area because we were kids and we weren't, we were just supposed to be there but not heard. A lot of us, after finishing school here, went on to college, left town. Some of us went into service. We found out there was a real world out there made up of different people. Now, a lot of you don't remember that Sheboygan used to have the flats when you lived there. You were considered lowly people. They had a Sheboygan Indians had a black catcher by the name of Johnny Roseboro, 
who couldn't spend the night in Sheboygan. But when we left the city, we found a new world. I lived in Dallas for over 30 years, took interest in city government and school, school board problems. And one thing I noticed in, in Dallas, growing up there during the 60s, 70s, and 80s, these were times of civil rights, the Vietnam War, uh, the hippie generation, the good times and bad times that Dallas experienced. Many people addressed the city council, but not one time did I witness or see that a person that addressed the city council from the outside was questioned or looked down upon. A lot of us aren't used to being public speakers. We're not educated. We're just the run of the mill. We get five minutes, but sometimes in the course of that five minutes, that person might have one sentence that's very important, and we should be treated that way. I was the last, well, during that time, that's what probably makes the difference between a growing city and a dying city, because we don't care for each other. To your last council meeting in the last three or four years, I, I watch all the council meetings and watch them live and then even as they come on tape later on. And I'm hurt to see that a member of the city gets up and talks and sometimes you all might not disagree with him, but you show it by your outside actions. You know, actions speak louder than words. That's an old phrase. And my parents, if they were living, their phrase would be, oh, Gott in Himmel. I don't know if you all know German, but that used to be the old German phrase when things went wrong. But the last councilman, Mr. Henry Capitola, was talking. Now, here's a man, I know the work he does and what, what he gives to the city. Now, we all can't be ribbon cutters or uh, shovel, using a ceremonial shovel to turn over the dirt. But a lot of these people that come to the podium here, they're the ones that pick up that ceremonial sh shovel and they actually do the work to make the city better. And that's what Henry does. He might not live in the city, but what that man does and the people he takes care of, you should be awful thankful to. If those same people did not have a place to stay and they were roaming the streets here in Sheboygan, you wouldn't be very happy. But he takes them and gives them a place to live, affordable housing, which Sheboygan doesn't have. So please, treat these people good. And it, you know, you might not disagree with them, but golly gee, you know, we don't need that in this city if you want it to grow. Otherwise, put a fence around it and say, check your mines there at the city limits, just like they did in the old west when you checked your guns. Thank you for your Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Capitello? Mr. Capitello, could you give me your address again, please? Yes, 1619 North 38th Street. 1619? North 38th. Thank you. And you have five minutes, please. Okay. The reason I'm here again, this council meeting, is because of the last council meeting and what happened after I left the podium. Once a speaker leaves the podium, we're not able to respond. Um, we can't have a debate from the gallery. We basically have to be quiet. And I didn't say anything just out of respect for the rules of, of just being a good citizen. But I'm here today just to let you know that 
every time that I've come and spoken to the city council, at no time did I try to uh, mislead you by saying that I was representing someone else or that I didn't live in the city. Um, when I come here, I either represent Home Inc., which is the company that I work with. I sometimes come here to represent the Citizens Action Group because I'm their spokesperson. Um, or else I'm here representing myself. And by looking at what was said after I spoke by Alderman Warner and uh, basically saying that I didn't live in the city and it kind of gave me the impression that, well, if I don't live in the city, I don't have anything to say about what happens within the city. But I think that's totally wrong because what happens is what happens in the city impacts the entire community, meaning the uh, other townships, the villages, and I can give you an example. You have representatives from the city of Sheboygan that are in different districts to the city that actually sit on the county board, which they represent the city. Um, you have uh, individuals that have come and have, you have changed the city ordinance to allow people outside the, the city to, I'll give you an example, Alderman Warner um, changed the, uh, the rules so that you could have attorney Bill T. Winkle, who lives in, in Oostburg, uh, to be able to sit on the ethics committee, uh, to have Mr. Rudneck, who lives in, I think, Crystal Lake. Um, we're talking, these communities are at least 18, 20 miles away from the city of Sheboygan. I live within 280 feet from the city of Sheboygan. And I think that just that alone should give me as much right as anyone else to be able to come and to be able to speak and to be able to be, able to be heard. I think what happens is sometimes you don't want to hear what the message is. So what you do, and just like in the Roman times when the general had a bad time, the battle didn't go right, he sent the messenger to, the, to Caesar and the messenger was beheaded because he did not like what the message was. And even though you do not like the message, you should at least have the courtesy to be able to listen to and to be able to consider what is being said. And what I did is I looked up in the, in the dictionary and there are, there are several definitions that I have. One that I would like to read off here, and that's basically discrimination. The act of discriminating, the facility of distinguishing or discriminating, discernment, the state of being discriminating or set apart. The other definition is bigoted. Having the character of a bigot, belonging to a bigot, showing blind attachment to opinions. Bigotry, the practice of tendance of a bigot, obstinate or blind attachment to a particular creed or to a certain tendency, unreasoning zealous intolerance. What happens in both of these definitions, they don't have to be because a person is a minority. You can discriminate it against other individuals. You can discriminate against a, an association. You can discriminate against a person doesn't have to be minority, can be non-minority, and can be discriminated against. You have people now that are filing lawsuits against uh, universities because they, it's reverse discrimination. So in these things, the key things are opinions. If you, if you really want, didn't want to listen to the opinions of the public, then I think that being a politician is not where some of you should be. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Yes. Um, Dulcie Johnson, please. Dulcie, can you give me your home address, please? It's 1306 North 3rd Street, Sheboygan. Mayor Schramm, council members. <clears throat> I would like to use my time to talk to you about dollars and cents, as in common sense. I have followed with interest the discussions and news reports about the current budget process, 
I was especially interested in a recent story in the press which quoted Alderman Groff as saying, I would guess most aldermen would feel comfortable with a 5% or less tax increase, closer Chelsea, to zero. Chelsea, can you pull the mic a little closer so we can hear? It's hard to hear. Oh. Or, thank you. Thank you. Okay. I was especially interested in a recent story in the press which quoted Alderman Groff as saying, I would guess most aldermen would feel comfortable with a 5% or less tax increase closer to zero than five. Alderman Groff, I would presume that most of your constituents would also be more comfortable with a 0% increase, which makes perfect sense given our already high taxes. I haven't weighed in with any budget suggestions, but one that immediately comes to mind is outsourcing. However, when I mentioned this at a public forum about a year or so ago, I was greeted with moans and groans from some council members. I am ever amazed that with all of the new industrial development, redevelopment, and annexations resulting in an increased tax base and all the rhetoric about how vital this or that project is because it will increase our tax base, the result is always higher taxes. Evidently, the prevailing economic theory is that a bigger tax base means more tax dollars to spend, with never a thought that a bigger tax base could mean lower taxes. Shortly, you will be voting on siting a new police station, and you will have the opportunity to save close to a million dollars on this project if you take the Building Use Committee's recommendations and can resist caving in to the pressures from the county board. There are three properties in question. A park that is not well used and is the preferred location of the independent consultants hired to evaluate the options. I love our parks. They are a great asset to our city. But in my opinion, we have reached the point of having more parks than we can afford to maintain. And then there is the county-owned property, which evidently the county does not need and wants to sell to the city. And the city-owned parking lot, which the city evidently does not need and which the county could use and would generously accept without paying the city anything for it. Evidently, this makes perfect sense to the county board, including some supervisors who were elected to represent city constituents. I hope it does not make sense to you. Suddenly, the county is dangling the carrot of shared services if the city opts for the 23rd Street site. You need to ask how, why does citing the city's police station on 23rd Street make sharing services more feasible, more acceptable than locating the police station elsewhere? Sounds to me like my way or the highway. If the county is truly sincere about sharing services, shouldn't this be possible if the police station is located at the Sheridan Park site? If the county does not need the 23rd Street site, perhaps they should sell it to the private sector. And if they need more parking, why not lease or buy the lot at 7th and Penn from the city? But maybe this makes too much sense. And now for the stick. In presenting the case for the county on July 6th, Adam Payne stated that if the city goes for the land swap deal and thereby gives the 7th and Pennsylvania parking lot to the county, the county wouldn't have to build a two or three million dollar parking ramp. But then I also seem to hear that if the city doesn't opt for the 23rd Street site, then the county may have to punish the city by taking properties on 5th Street off the tax rolls and building a ramp. And that doesn't make a lot of sense, because if the parking lot could solve their parking needs, why does it matter where the police station is located? And why raise the idea of an expensive parking ramp except to bully the city into accepting the land swap deal? Personally, I would like to see the police station downtown, but that doesn't seem to be on the table. The choice is Sheridan or 23rd Street, and the former seems to be the better choice, for reasons pointed out by Alderman Berg in a letter to the press, which makes a lot of sense. Alderman Berg noted the easy access to the Sheridan site, the fiber optics accessibility, the opportunity for underground parking, and the need for the council to make decisions in the best interests of the taxpayers. In this case, a potential savings of almost $1 million. I strongly support sharing services, but though we're hearing a lot of talk from the county now about shared services, don't hold your breath. We've been down that road before. I urge you to use good, common sense in making your decision and in committing your constituents' tax dollars. 
Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Jamie Schramm. Jamie, can you give me your home address, please? 1227 North 29th Street. North 29th. Thank you. And you have five minutes. Thank you. Good evening, and thanks for allowing me to share a few moments of your time. I know you often hear about the things that people want, don't like, or think the city of Sheboygan should pursue in the future. Many of these are great ideas, and some of them end up becoming reality. However, I'm here tonight to briefly say thanks. Thanks to all of our elected officials and to those who serve on many of the various committees, commissions, and civic organizations within our community who have brought about an incredible transformation in Sheboygan, on which has strengthened our hometown pride and ensured a bright future for our children. Speaking of our children, it was during a recent trip through a downtown area that made me realize just how special we as a community have become. I had the opportunity to spend an entire vacation day with my six-year-old son, and we made plans to take in the sights and sounds of A Street and finish our day at Breaker Bay Water Park. The very fact that one of them would have made plans to spend an entire day in A Street would have been unimaginable when I was my son's age, a point he drove home in his own unique way. As we passed the Above and Beyond Children's Museum, my son took the opportunity to remind me that I needed to renew our membership because it was a really cool place to have fun. Not long after that, we passed the Stephanie H. Wiles Center, and I again got hit with another question. Gee, Dad, think they'll show the Wizard of Oz there again like they did last year? We got to talking about the Wiles Center, and I got the inevitable, what was the theater like when you were my age? My only recollection was that it had dam gotten damaged by water, and no one really thought of it as a special place. And since my alderman, Bob Peterson, was instrumental in its renovation, I'll say thanks to all those involved who have given us a gem of a facility. We passed a few people we knew and had a conversation with friends. We then took in a coffee shop or two, many of which have sprung up in recent years, each having something unique to offer our community. As we passed the library, still one of the finest in the country, my son reminded me his books were returned on time and I wouldn't have to pay any late fees. It was at this point he asked me if I spent much time on A Street when I was six. I told him it was known as Plaza 8 back then. There wasn't a children's museum, there wasn't a renovated theater, and there weren't all the coffee shops. We took a walk out to the North Lighthouse, past the marina, checking out a few boats, and I got asked the question, has the marina been there a long time, Dad? I told him since the early 1990s. I got the same question when we went walking along the boardwalk. When I explained to him that the riverfront was a muddy path with trees, rocks, and people's unwanted items, he asked, where'd everyone sit for the fireworks? I explained they were shot off in the land park and people sat there. Rotary Park just didn't exist. Oh, you mean over by the fish cleaning station? That smells funny. He understood. At the end of our walk, I realized the better part of our day had passed. We were both eager to relax, so we put off Breaker Bay for another day. In time, parents all over the Sheboygan area will realize what a wonderful escape that water park is especially when Mother Nature spoils plans to spend a day at the beach or in the middle of winter when everyone is eager for spring. We made it to Breaker Bay the next day and afterwards had the chance to have dinner at one of Blue Harbor's restaurants. A group of people dining nearby, our table made this remark, I can't believe this is in Sheboygan. Sheboygan may have been very good when I was six. Today, as my son will attest to, it continues to get better. It's not just better because of the Children's Museum, the Wild Center, the Marina, Blue Harbor, Rotary Park, the Riverfront, the coffee shops, our library are those funny smelling fish cleaning stations. It's better because of all the people who challenged us along the way, worked hard, and believed in our community. Their efforts, their courage, and their vision speak volumes as to the great spirit in our community. A spirit that says, believe. This is Sheboygan. And the great part is, we get to call it home. Thanks. Thank you. <clears throat> Jean Wilhelm. Mr. Wilhelm, can you give me your home address, please? Yes, um, I live at 1328 Lens Court. Lens Court? Lens Court. Okay, and you have five minutes. Thank you. Um, Mayor Schramm, council members, thank you for this opportunity to speak to you. My name is Jean Wilhelm. I have lived on the corner of North 13th Street and Lens Court since 1981. I have had two businesses here in Sheboygan and several apartments. In my current business, I have five people working for me. One of them is from Germany, another one is coming to work and study with us in September of this year. My concern is this letter to the editor, written in July 9th issue of the Sheboygan Press. I am told it was written by your son, Mayor, Jamie Schramm. In this letter, he attacks the local citizens action group calling them a lynch mob. 
I have been to a meeting or two of theirs and find them anything but a lynch mob. They seem to be concerned citizens and nothing more. I also believe they do not limit their interests to the city only. Then Jamie goes on to attack people like Marilyn Montemayor, who is my alderman. He also attacks Juan Perez, who I have known as a friend for over 20 years, and who, by the way, has a law degree from the University of Wisconsin-Madison. His next attack victim is Henry Capitello, who is a North High graduate and classmate of my wife. He has more experience helping the underprivileged than all of us in this room put together. He is even attacked because he might live on 38th Street. What difference is it if he lives on 138th Street? It seems like when legal advice is needed by the mayor's office, you can hire an attorney that lives in Oostburg. At the last council meeting, your very first speaker, Adam Payne, was from Plymouth. In fact, every paragraph in this letter contains a lie. It should never have been printed in paper. I believe it is not only our right as citizens, but our duty and obligation to question our legal representatives regarding their actions. You are not royalty. You are still elected. With this kind of animosity towards anyone who speaks to you in this council who might disagree with you or question you and your decisions, along with all the infighting and personal attacks in this very council room, I am wondering how you accomplish anything. Finally, I would like to quote one of the current political phrases that I despise. If you approve this message in the paper, I believe that you and or your son, Mr. Schramm, owe the people mentioned in this letter a very sincere and public and a very humble apology. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. That's it. Okay. Okay, consent agenda. <clears throat> Alderman Warner. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that all ROs be accepted and placed on file. All RCs be accepted and adopted, and all resolutions, substitute resolutions, and ordinances be passed. Second. It's moved and seconded that all ROs be accepted and filed. RCs be accepted and adopted. Resolutions and ordinances be put upon their passage. <clears throat> Alderman Perez. Thank you, Mayor. I have a question uh, regarding 810. 810. Uh, if I may ask, we are filing the, uh, the request by Mr. McDonald. I uh, uh, have a peace pole placed on the, uh, the rotary on Indiana. My question is, did the committee consider other locations? Committee? Who's in the committee? City plan. The recommendation from the uh, plan commission was to file the document. There was no discussion on other locations. However, it did come up that that certainly could be a possibility to look at other sites. And I guess I'd ask the mayor or Alderman Warner if they had any additional comments with regards to it, but that was staff's take of the matter. <coughs> because we are looking at the artwork that is already existing in the rotary. Alderman Warner? That's what I was just gonna say, there was already an, an art Okay, and, and I guess my, my concern is that perhaps we, we should look at our locations. Uh, I know Larry McDonald quite well, and uh, Mayor, you so do too. We serve uh, with the, the uh, Kiwanis uh, Club, and he is a very committed, dedicated man to peace and uh, acceptance of uh, diversity. And to have something like this would, would be very symbolic and appropriate for a, a a city uh, that, that's been very progressive and accepting diversity itself. Uh, I would ask that the committee uh, re reconsider, and in, in that respect, uh, I would make a motion to refer back to the City Planning Commission for consideration. We have a motion before us in a second, under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Excuse me, Attorney. Oh, I'm just, just going to say, you know, the Planning Commission, it, it goes there because uh, that's required to go there uh, before setting monuments at a particular location. It's not really the plan commission that comes up with ideas as to where to put things. It's there to make recommendations uh, on whether or not that's an appropriate place for it. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if you want to direct the plan commission to look at other areas to put it or to call in Mr. McDonald. You could do that, 
but that may be more appropriate in another committee, I would think, uh, Alderman Perez. Yeah. Go ahead. Thank you. And I guess that would be the thing to do is refer it back to the Planning Commission, let them decide that, yes, we approve, but we need to find a location. The, com the Planning Commission can refer it back to Public Works or wherever they want to. Alderman Warner. I think uh, perhaps we could just refer the issue to public, straight to Public Works and save a couple of weeks in there. Correct. Right. Goes to Public Works, they can look and see if they can find a site, uh, and that would have to come back to the Planning Commission. We did the same thing with uh, Among Memorial. That actually went to the through Public Works, I think, first, and then ended up going to the Planning Commission. So. So do you want to amend your motion? Thank you. Uh, yes, I'll amend the motion accordingly, please. Okay, we have a motion to send before us to send this to public works. <coughs> Another discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Anything else on the documents from 8-1 through 8-22? Alderman Warren? Uh, yes, Your Honor. I just wanted to speak a little on document 8-20. Document 8, 820 speaks to uh, the City of Sheboygan's emergency operations plan that was uh, gone over by Deputy Chief uh, Latusky of the Fire Department. He's chairman of the Emergency Planning Committee. And it was a great deal of effort to get this plan coordinated, uh, not only with the county, but uh, up to state standards and things to keep it current so that if the city ever needs an operations uh, plan that deals with all emergencies across the, the gamut, that it's up to date. And uh, Deputy Chief Lutusky spent a lot of time putting this together and he did a great job. Thank you. If there's no other discussion, would you call the roll, please? Berg? Aye. One? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. And Bauman? 14 ayes. Motion carried. 823 will be filed. 824 through 26 to be referred. 827 through 833 to be referred. 834 we will refer to salary and grievance. 835 by Alderman, ba Alderman Bauman, Berg, Sagali. Ryan Flesh and Peterson, allowing the Sheboygan Yacht Club to utilize the south half of the trailer parking area for additional parking purposes during the 2005 Lightning North American Championships, August 13th through the 19th. Alderman Bowen. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the uh, resolution be put upon its passage. Move to second the resolution be put upon its passage. Under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, this it will be an event that will be happening in the year 2005, not 2004. And the fact is, this is like the PGA of uh, sailing, is what it's going to be. And they did offer, after long discussion in committee, um, a few things that we didn't expect them to offer. So we're very pleased with this uh, uh, resolution. <coughs> Hearing no other discussion, we don't need to roll on that. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. 836 will lie over. 837 through 840 to be referred. 841, by law and licensing, recommending denying beverage operator's license. Alderman Bonet. Thank you, Your Honor. Make a motion to accept and adopt the, the report of committee. Second. Thank you. Moved and second. Moved and second to accept and adopt the report of committee. I'll move an A. Ah uh, yes. License number fifty-seven thirty-two. Peter Vriki. Are you present tonight? Peter Vriki. Mr. Chairman, Peter Vriki is not present. Okay. Uh, license number sixty-three ninety-three. Amanda Cobb. Amanda Cobb, are you present? Amanda Cobb's not present, Your Honor. And third is license number 6392, Laura Stanley. Laura Stanley, are you present? Your Honor, many people are present. Okay. If there is no other discussion, would you call the roll, please? Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Stefan? 
Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. And Bonet? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carried. 842 by law and licensing recommending denying various licenses. All in Bonet. Thank you, Your Honor. Make a motion to accept and adopt the report of the committee. Second. We have a motion and a second before us under discussion. Um, yes, alcohol license number 1776 for Terry and Donna Altman of Gold Rush. Are you present? Mr. Chairman, they are not present. Okay. Beverage operator license number 5301, Terry Altman. Terry Altman, are you present? Mr. Chairman, he's not present. Beverage operator, operator license number 5108, Michael Gilbertson. Michael Gilbertson, are you present? He's not present. Beverage operator license number 6419, Joseph Jensen. Joseph, are you present? He's not present, Your Honor. And beverage operator's license 4042, Melissa Litka. Melissa, are you present? I'd like to amend this and refer back to committee beverage operator's license 5645, Ricky Racine, to be referred by committee. Any second? Second. Okay, we have an amendment on the floor and a second. Under discussion, Alderman Stefan. Uh, yes, Your Honor, you know, most of these are uh, beverage operator's license, which you know, I understand we, we don't pass them and they can't uh, operate by themselves, obviously. Uh, the first one is the alcohol license. Now, does that mean that establishment is then closed or what are the ramifications of that? Alderman Bonet. I'm sorry, what, what was the question, Alderman? Um, number Stephen? one was it actually an alcohol license, it wasn't Correct. beverage operators. So does that mean that business is closed and they just can't serve alcohol or? Uh, without a license, no. So? Um, it's the Gold Rush and they have been closed since mid-May and they've done a renewal on their license. However, they have no intention of opening. They're just holding it for a new buyer to come in. So they are closed. And, and by doing this, are we allowing them to hold that or are we? We can give it to somebody else if we want to. Mm -hmm. And just to note, no. the committee, address him. Sure. Okay. All Alderman Stefan, also it should be noted that it's based on a failure to cooperate with the committee and failure to reveal all violations. Right, right. I understand this. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. If there's no other discussion on amendment, would you call the roll? Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Perez, Aye. Peterson, Aye. Rinfleisch, Aye. Stefan, Aye. Van Akron, Aye. Wangaman, Aye. Warner, Aye. Bauman, Aye. Berg, Aye. Bonet, Aye. Serta. 14 ayes. Motion carried. Now, Alderman Bonet. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to make a motion to accept and adopt the amended, I guess, report of committee. We have a motion before us in a second, under discussion. Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carried. 843 and 844. Oh, yeah, eight, no, excuse me, it isn't. 843, by strategic fiscal plan. Do you want that sent back to committee? Yes, please. Okay, that will be referred back to strategic committee. Along with 845 and 846 also. And also with 845 and 846. Okay. 844 will be referred to public protection and safety. And Eight. building use. And what? It's got and building use on here too. And building use? Yes. Okay. Public protection and safety and building use. 847 will lie over. 636 by city plan recommending passing ordinance creating section in a zoning code so as to prohibit outdoor wood burning furnaces as accessory uses in all districts. Alderman Warner. I think I move to accept the file, the report of officer, and that the ordinance be passed. 
Moved and seconded that we accept and uh, file the report of officer and ordinance be put upon this passage. Any discussion? All in press. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, if it's possible, I, I'd ask that the council or the committee or somebody is to be assigned to put together a press release explaining exactly what this is about. There's a lot of confusion going on. I don't know if the press or the radio is going to pick up on it tonight or if they have enough time to do it, but it'd be it'd be appropriate for somebody to, to take charge and uh, put together a press release to explain to the people what exactly is allowed and what isn't. Okay. Who handled it? Alderman Ballman? Was that Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Alderman Rankflesh? Uh, just agreeing with uh, Alderman Perez, but it, while we have the cameras on TV8 here, can, would it be appropriate to do a short discussion of what we're banning and what we're not banning? Alderman Ballman? Okay, Your Honor, thank you very much. The um, outdoor furnaces that are being banned in this particular uh, ordinance is the type that would be placed outside of a home much like the type that you see in rural areas uh, to heat a home basically or an outbuilding for about a 24 hour period. What they would do is put a load into this furnace of either green wood, regular wood, could be uh, the, the corn that, that some of these furnaces burn or whatever. And it's made to smolder basically and heat during this 24 hour period. Could be summer, could be winter, could be fall, could be spring, could be any time of the year. It, they are designed, of course, for areas that do not have accessibility to things like heating oil and uh, natural gas, propane gas, things like that. And they started popping up in various cities throughout the state. And there's a very offensive odor that most of the time does go along with this. And the constant wood burning, not only odor, but the smoke and things. For homes that are located near these, uh, places that do have these, the people usually are unable to open things like windows. And if it's a nice day, maybe want to be able to hang out their laundry. Can't do it because of the fact that the uh, smoke and, and or odors do permeate the air and the clothing and the inside of their homes. So this is why the ordinance basically was brought up is so to prohibit these type of wood burning furnaces. And like I say, not only wood burning, but the other types of fuels that they could also be using. So I hope this explains a lot. Very good. Go ahead, Steve. Uh, I think it should also be pointed out and the ordinance specifies this, that. The ban does not include fire pits, barbecues, fryers, or chimneys. It's just these uh, wood outdoor wood-burning furnaces that I see a lot of heading up north uh, are would not be permitted in the in the side yards or whatever to uh, to heat the, the house or or the garage. Okay. Okay. If there's no other discussion, would you call the roll, please? Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. And Manny? Aye. 14 <laughs> ayes. Motion carried. 742 RC, by Public Protection and Safety, recommending amending the code so as to extend the time periods during which small recreational bonfires are permitted. Alderman Warner. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion to accept and file the report of committee and that the general ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion before us and a second to accept and adopt your, the committee report under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, uh, this will allow people to have fire pits in their backyards until midnight on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday nights prior to a, a holiday. Uh, the, the old ordinance stated that they had to have those fire pits extinguished at 10, 10 p.m. And with the short summers we have around here, a lot of people would like to stay out later at night and uh, not be breaking the law. So they still have to meet all the fire safety codes of setbacks from buildings at 20 feet and, and such, but just allows them on Fridays, Saturday nights, and Sundays uh, preceding the holiday to stay up a little later. Very good. Alderman Munchman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It sounds reasonable. Uh, 
I've had a couple of calls, however, of my constituents in my district who don't want it extended. Only a few calls. I've had no calls saying, yes, do extend it. I've had a few calls saying, don't. And I was thinking, well, 10 o'clock, yeah, perhaps from 10 till midnight there's a fire, but that's just much, pretty much for the adults to watch the fire, drink a couple more beer, something like that. So because of the phone calls to me, I will be voting against it. Thank you. Uh, Alderman right quick. I would like to point out, uh, it simply allows people to have the fireplace, fire pits burning for longer than they have allowed to previously. It does not allow them to make noise. It does not allow them to be a nuisance to their neighbors. If smoke is blowing into someone's house, it still is um, uh, a nuisance that the fire department can come and put the fire out, even if it's before midnight. Uh, you still have to be a good neighbor with your fire. You still have to not be uh, a nuisance, either with your noise or with uh, your smoke. So while we're allowing that, we're not allowing total freedom here as well. Okay, Alderman Longman. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, we discussed this at great length in public safety and protection, and if you look in the city ordinances, we're more than protected under the nuisance statutes that anybody might cause smoke to go in someone's house, or if you've got a loud party and they start you know, making a bunch of racket. And uh, so we just thought it was appropriate that we not encumber citizens just too much with all these uh, inconsequential ordinances when we already have enough ordinances on the book. So I, I can see little problem in extending it. If there's a loud party, you call the police and they'll shut them down just like they would anything else. If smoke is going in your house or it's a danger or it's a nuisance, again, you call the police and they'll, if necessary, dispatch the fire department to put it out. So, you know, it's just uh, all of these things uh, make Sheboygan more difficult to live when we don't, you know, when we have to have all these uh, uh, objections to uh, simple ordinances that relate to people just having fun in their own backyard. And this is why the committee extent, uh, voted to extend uh, on weekends and uh, times when people might want to spend some time out in their backyard. So I, I can't see that it would have any problem because the protection is there for the citizens. And if you got smoke coming in your house, just call somebody, they'll take care of it. Thank you. All in order. Oh, thank you, Your Honor. I would just say I, I agree with my uh, two fellow Public Protection and Safety Committee members. Though all those items were discussed, I think it makes the city a little bit more resident friendly in an area that's easy to do. But uh, and I would ask Alderman Montemayor if you have problems with your if someone calls you, make sure that just tell them to call the police department because if it's creating a nuisance, those fires have to be put out. Thank you. Okay. If there's no other discussion. Would you call the roll, please? Perez? Aye. Peterson? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? No. 12 ayes, 2 noes. Motion carried. 741, a resolution by Alderman Graf, Berg, Manny, and Montemayor authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2004 budget. Alderman McGraw. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Moved and seconded that the resolution be put upon its passage. Under discussion. <coughs> Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Peterson. Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carried. 849, a resolution by Alderman Warner approving the City of Sheboygan and the Sheboygan Fire Department accepting the Wisconsin Homeland Security Grant Fund and expending them for the intent purpose. Alderman Warner. I thank Your Honor. I would make a motion that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Who does second the resolution be put upon its pa Oh, first of all, we need suspension. Excuse me. Uh, that will move to suspend the rules. Second. Is there any objection to suspension? Hearing none, proceed. Then I would move the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion before us in a second. Under discussion? <clears throat> Under discussion, Your Honor, this is a resolution approving the City of Sheboygan and the Sheboygan Fire Department accepting the Wisconsin Homeland Security Grant Fund and expending them for the intended purpose, which is um, for the Sheboygan Fire Department to put together a 
Mobile Command Post, and they will uh, I actually have uh, Deputy Chief Latusky explain this a little bit more in depth. Uh, the grants provided the city with a much needed Mobile Command Post, which we know several years ago we were looking at, and we could not obtain the funding for one from the Common Council. Uh, this will do it at no cost to the city taxpayers. And I would also like to note that Community Bank and its continuing effort of civic service has also donated $25,000 to make this happen, as they had offered to do in the past when we discussed this. I think that's wonderful. The mobile command post will be available to the police and fire, and even the county if needed, and provide a higher level of emergency response throughout the city. And I'd just like Steve to explain, if he could, uh, a little bit about what the whole program is, because it's also uh, a little bit more detailed than that. Thank you, Alderman Warner. Uh, Mayor Schramm and ladies and gentlemen of the council, I'm very happy to be here this evening and I will keep this brief, but it's, it's a pleasure to come here with what I feel is very good news. Uh, these funds that we're talking about are available uh, through the federal government, uh, Department of Homeland Security, and they're being administered through Wisconsin, State of Wisconsin Office of Justice Administration. We became aware that these funds would be available through the grant process, and we were very eager to write an application for them. There's a number of categories that are involved in this, and we are able to address the needs that they expect from us as far as being available to help on a county-wide or even a regional-wide disaster if needed. But more so than that, this is an opportunity for us to build upon the services that we provide right here in our, in our own community. Uh, the command post, which Alderman Warner alluded to, is uh, over 30 years old right now, and it's, it's unsafe and very impractical for what we're using for it. It's the old converted bookmobile. Many of you are familiar with it. And they were able to purchase a new one. Some of this was alluded to in the press article two weeks ago. We're able to purchase a new one, something that's safe, something that's reliable, something that we'll gladly share with the police department and other city departments as the need arises. The rescue truck, which is the second part of this, is something that is needed. It's long overdue. Over the years, the things that the fire department is called upon to do for rescue services or required to do in some cases, collapse rescue, trench rescue, water rescue, the list goes on and on. And we, for a period of years, have been adding equipment as the budget would allow and putting this mainly on our heavy duty rescue squad. The practicality of this, it's hard on the equipment. It's hard to get the equipment off and use it when needed. This is an opportunity for us to place some of the lesser used equipment on this secondary truck make that one available to uh, respond to any requests that may come from the state. It's also a great opportunity for us to have a backup vehicle when our primary rescue squad is out of service for some type of maintenance or whatever. Up to this point, we have never had the luxury of having a backup rescue squad. Tools and equipment. There's a number of tools and equipment that we're going to be purchasing. And again, this is used to expand upon and enhance programs that we already have in place with, with equipment that we have not been able to obtain through the standard budget process. Enhancing of our collapse rescue capabilities, trench rescue capabilities, jaws of life equipment, airbags, and things like that. Uh, there's also training being provided. The state has a formula by which they put a dollar value on a training, and this is also covered by the state funds. We will be able to send people to uh, Volk Field, where they're going to have this center beginning in September, and they are going to pay for the training, they're going to pay for the lodging and all other related expenses. As I said, this is an opportunity for the city uh, to accept something uh, with a little bit of the funding being <coughs> covered by the grant, which uh, Community Bank has been so generous as to do, and uh, a purchase of the rescue truck chassis from our major apparatus account monies which are in place and are available for this sort of thing. A lot of research went into this so that we're not purchasing things that are not needed. Uh, we wanted to make sure that what we did purchase, as I said, enhanced what we provide. And we also wanted to make sure because 
everything, and I've learned this in my position in the last six years, everything you purchase has a cost of ownership, whether it's batteries or maintenance or calibrations or whatever. So we want to make sure that what we're purchasing was also prudent, that it's not going to cost us a lot of money uh, down in years to come that will not be affordable in our budget. And I think we've accomplished that by putting together the list of things that we have. Uh, I uh, ask for your support in this, and if anybody would have any questions, I'd gladly answer them. Oliver McGraw. Thank you. Um, just one question regarding future maintenance and so forth. Um, because of the fact that the, the former, the bookmobile and so forth, will probably be retired and used less than it ever has been before, I'm sure the maintenance costs that were associated with that are far less for this new equipment than it was for that bookmobile. Is that correct? So therefore, we wouldn't have to add any additional maintenance dollars into, let's say, the, the 2005 or 2006 budget. I don't anticipate that our vehicle maintenance account would be affected in, in any way with this, either okay. positively or negatively. OK, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. There's no other discussion. Would you call the roll, please? Rin Fleisch? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Longman? Warner? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Aye. Peterson? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carried. Steve, under other matters, 850. 850 is communication from the Wisconsin Department of Administration stating they have no objections to the final plan of Blake Air Edition Number Three. And that can be accepted and placed on file. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. 851 is communication from the Sheboygan Area School District requesting that the city grant funding under the proposed charter cable contract to help improve its programming opportunities. And that will go to finance. Alderman and Warner. Thank you, Your Honor. I would make a motion uh, to convene in closed session on the provisions of Section 1985-1E for the purposes of deliberating on a proposed option to purchase land in the Sheboygan Business Center where competitive and bargaining reasons require a closed session. Second. Is there any objections? All in favor? Oh, you got to call a roll. Call a roll, please. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Serta? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Perez? Peterson, Aye. Rinfleisch, Aye. Stephan, Aye. Van Akron, Wangaman, Aye. Warner. 14 ayes. Motion carried. We'll take five minutes, let everyone clear out, and we'll be in full session. Inbounds play, Nets Lakeland, a three-point basket and a four-point lead. Getting away with another turnover there. Should have been a turnover at least.